So what exactly is Lyme disease? It is a bacterial infection caused by spirochetal bacteria known as Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh, Lyme disease is transmitted by ticks, uh, the kind of tick that you find on a mouse or a deer. And uh, like I said, this is not scientifically confirmed as far as I know some of these other methods of transmission, but I've seen some pretty strong evidence that there is also uh, other ways that it can be transmitted, including those that are listed there. Interestingly, Lyme disease affects all organs, including the brain, because the spiral-shaped bacteria that you can see there in the top right picture, it acts a lot like a drill. It looks like a drill bit, and it can uh, literally drill its way through lots of tissues that other bacteria and, and organisms cannot get into. The symptoms in Lyme disease are caused by two main uh, mechanisms. The first is neurotoxins that that bacteria releases on a regular basis, and the second is inflammation that is present with any type of infection. We are going to look at some common beliefs about various aspects of Lyme disease followed by reality. So uh, you'll find that the reality is often very different from the common beliefs, which is one of the reasons that Lyme disease is a very misunderstood disease because common beliefs just aren't right all the time. Uh, many people believe that Lyme disease is only present if there's a narrow spectrum of symptoms. Often this includes flu-like symptoms, joint pain, and uh, Bell's palsy, which is numbness of one side of the face. As we'll see, that's not always true. Um, many people believe that the symptoms are identical in every case, and the, the Western paradigm of medicine is for doctors to try to put diseases that are often quite complicated and multifaceted into, into very small boxes, and that's what happens with Lyme disease. Reality is that the symptoms differ greatly between individuals. Lyme disease is known as the great imitator and can uh, masquerade, in other words, mimic many different conditions, um, multiple sclerosis, arthritis, obsessive compulsive disorder. If you look at this list, you'll find that a lot of these things seem like they have nothing to do with each other. Schizophrenia and OCD are, are mental disorders. Cardiac problems is a heart disorder. Migraine headaches is a, is a, is a head disorder, pun intended. <laughs> um, irritable bowel syndrome is a disorder of the colon. So how can this be that this bacteria can cause all these different symptoms? Well, it's simple. The bacteria, as we looked at, is a spiral shape, and it can literally infect every different area of the body. So that's how this can happen. Um, I, I'm not saying that Lyme disease is the cause of, this, of these conditions in every case, because that's not true. There are plenty of other causes for these conditions, but if you or someone you know has one of these conditions, it, it definitely is to your benefit to research Lyme disease. Uh, common beliefs about how Lyme disease is diagnosed, many people believe that doctors are trained to look for the disease. They believe that laboratory tests are accurate and uh, some people believe that modern medicine has Lyme disease figured out. In reality, doctors are taught that Lyme disease is very rare. Uh, most laboratory tests are not reliable. In fact, I think they're, they're sort of worthless. Um, and modern medicine largely ignores Lyme disease. Uh, an accurate diagnosis, in my opinion, is best made by a clinical, uh, clinical observation and a therapeutic trial we can spend a minute looking at what a therapeutic trial is. Um, it's basically administering a trial course of Lyme disease treatment uh, to someone who, who you may suspect has the disease. For example, giving someone a ripe treatment or a short course of antibiotics and monitoring their response. This works because Lyme disease is one of the few documented illnesses that involves a Herxheimer reaction after antibiotics or a ripe session. In other words, if someone has Lyme disease, uh, there will be a very nasty reaction that follows their use of one of these treatments. If they do not have that reaction, it is probably uh, likely that they may not have Lyme disease or that the Lyme disease bacteria may not be in, in the form that is susceptible to, um, to the treatment, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Common beliefs about how prevalent Lyme disease is, it's believed to be a rare infection, isolated to only a few regions, only in the United States and it's believed that we have accurate statistics on the actual number of cases. And many people think that eh, there's not really much increasing Lyme disease every year. Reality uh, is that it's a very common infection. All 50 states have reported cases. It is 
uh, prevalent worldwide, and we do not have accurate statistics on how many cases there are. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Um, number of cases greatly increasing each year, as you can see from this chart. This is actually a Center for Disease Control chart, and uh, they underreport Lyme disease. So keep in mind while you're looking at this chart that this is underreported. 1982. Uh, this is in thousands on the vertical column there. There were less than 1,000 cases reported by the CDC in 2000, um, pushing 18,000 cases. And uh, as you can see by the, the steepness of that, of that chart there, it is definitely on the rise. This is another CDC uh, map. When you're looking at these things, always keep in mind that they are underreported. Uh, showing cases of Lyme disease in the United States. Each dot represents a case. As you can see, uh, the East Coast is primarily where you will find it, but if you look at California, Oregon, uh, Washington, Idaho, many of the central and northern states by the Great Lakes, and Texas, Florida, you'll see that there are some cases reported there as well. This is only the number of cases in 2004. So if you remember that, uh, that Lyme disease is often not treated correctly, these cases become cumulative. Worldwide distribution of ticks that can transmit Lyme disease, the United States is only a small part of the problem. Again, um, the CDC underreports, and they're very conservative in, in the reporting. So uh, this, I've talked to people in Australia and uh, Africa and Canada and many other places where there is clearly Lyme disease. So you can use your imagination to, to upgrade this to whatever you think is, is uh, more real. Um, Peter Walker from Europe was talking to us yesterday. If you are interested in Lyme disease and you live in Europe, there's a great uh, discussion group that says there on the bottom right there's about 1,200 people in it. I think that's increased a little bit, but there's a, a good place to get uh, some, some good information. It's a free group. And if you can't read the website URL up there, you can come talk to me afterwards and I'll try to give you that information. A little bit more about what the math reveals um, about how many cases of Lyme disease there are so you can um, kind of get this into your head that it's a serious problem. Let's look at the math a little bit. Uh, the CDC, as we saw, said that there was about 18,000 cases. I rounded up to 20. Um, Experts estimate that only 10% of the cases are reported to the CDC, and I'll give you a reference for that in a second. The reason for that is that infected people often don't suspect Lyme disease, so they don't ever get tested, so their case is never reported. So that's one reason for underreporting. Um, inaccurate tests, those who do get tested often get a false negative, and so they don't think they have Lyme disease, and so that doesn't hit the CDC report. And um, lastly, the CDC has very unrealistic reporting criteria meaning that uh, there's different bands of antigens and antibodies, and the CDC doesn't say you're positive unless you're ridiculously positive. If you have Lyme disease, but it's not an extremely positive test, they say you don't have it. So that's another reason for this. If you take uh, the number of cases the CDC estimates, which is 20,000, and if it's only 10% uh, accurate or 10% reported, then you multiply 20,000 by, by 10 or you divide it by 0 0.10 and you get 200,000 cases per year in the United States alone. I told you I was going to give you a reference and the Townsend Letter for Doctors and Patients, which is a, an excellent uh, periodical published, I believe, in Seattle in their 2004 July issue, they also agreed with me and said that there were 200,000 new cases in the United States. And that's just in the United States. Um, if you take into account the fact that those people who are treated and those who are not treated, in other words, uh, people who were unsuccessfully treated or, or never got treatment, uh, you find that these cases are cumulative. So while there's 200,000 new cases this year, there were 200,000 new cases last year and 200,000 new cases the year before, uh, probably a little bit less if it's on the rise. So if you do the math there and you look at a cumulative number of cases, um, how many do we have right now? One million, 10 million in the United States? I'm not sure, but it's a big number. To, to put that in perspective, the American Cancer Society reports that there are 1.2 million cases of cancer per year, so we know that Lyme disease is probably not as big of a problem as cancer, but it's a lot bigger than most people think. <laughs>